Greetings everyone, welcome to our channel, I'm Homie from Fantasy Pie. We should talk about the newly released Disney Plus show WandaVision. So without wasting any time, let's get to the review. Now, did I like the two episodes we got? Sure, it was great for what it was. I wasn't expecting more from the first four episodes and because of that, I wasn't let down or disappointed in any way. Plus, I'm really happy these two weren't more than 25 slash 30 minutes, because then they could get boring. But that doesn't mean I would be cool with it if the entire show was gonna be like that. I wouldn't. Cause while all of this paying homage to the old shows and stuff is really cool and cute, a lot of fans and I are here to see Vision and Scarlet kick names and take ass. Uh, what exactly is it that they do? Kick names, take ass. Yeah, that's right. So I wouldn't have enjoyed these two episodes if I knew this was going to be our show for the entire series. It was a love letter to sitcoms and American TV shows back in the 50s and the 60s. Uh, the jokes, their style of clothing, uh, even the way they spoke. Uh, not only Wanda has completely lost her accent from the past movies, although that was the pattern they were following, but also she is speaking just like the people from that era. You really are very dashing. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Watching Catherine Hahn only adds more to my suspicion about her being a Gotha Harkness. I don't know why, but she really scared me. Uh, she's weird and or really happy in some scenes for some freaking reason, and that's no coincidence. Coincidence? I think not! Her connection to Mephisto is ready to serve as the hot pie of this video in the next few minutes. One cool thing that I really liked was that the fix in the show, you know, the kitchen utensils flying and hovering and stuff, uh, looked like they were hanging on a wire, just like the old TV shows used to do effects. So those stuff were cool. I also really liked the way the freaky stuff was played out. And by freaky stuff, I mean the moments where Wanda was pushed to realize that this reality isn't real. And all of this imagined world is literally made up. The moment Jimmy will ask Wanda who is doing this to you through the radio, the caller helicopter at the the beginning of episode 2, uh, the blonde woman Dottie being all weird and tough towards Wanda, and oh my god the beekeeper guy coming out of the sewer, that was the cherry on top. Now I'm gonna talk about him more later in the video, but his scene specifically was one of my absolute favorites. And the way she was like no, and fucking rewound the show was freaking amazing. Really wish there was a button like that, so that you could rewind life to the moments you love. Jesus Christ. Anyways, these two episodes were solid and enjoyable. I'm pretty sure that the next one and the one after that are also gonna follow the same pattern. And at the end of the fourth one, I'm pretty sure we're gonna revert back to the standard WandaVision kickassery we're all waiting for. And maybe in the finale, we can see how Doctor Strange and Evan Peters are gonna play out in the show. Not to say Aaron Taylor Johnson's Quicksilver. Now, let's talk about Monica Rambo and Dottie. Side note, the fact that Monica and Dottie showed up after the red toy helicopter showed up on Wanda's garden is not a coincidence at all. It was pretty symbolic and cool. Now, Monica was pretty normal in the second episode. There weren't any glitches, but now that it's confirmed that she's going to be a S.W.O.R.D. member, things will absolutely get interesting in the next episodes. From what we've seen in the trailers and TV spots, we're going to see Monica's glitches and holograms in the 70s and 80s parts of the show. Dottie was really weird. Uh, I'm pretty sure she's going to play a huge role when we get to the serious stuff at the second half of the show. Uh, she has come to Wanda's reality and already she's hating her. Probably because she's somehow the leader in the sword organization and she's probably afraid of what Wanda can do. Now let's talk about sword a little bit. In the comics, it stands for Sentient World Observation and Response Department and was created by Joss Whedon and John Cassidy and used in the Astonishing X-Men. But in the MCU, it stands for Sentient Weapon Observation and Response Department, which gives more clarity to our predictions about sword keeping Wanda locked up because they think she can very well be a weapon of mass destruction if she wants to. Now, what character is Dottie gonna play? Uh, the mutant Abigail Brand, I think. Uh, she is the head of S.W.O.R.D. in the Astonishing X-Men comics and was again created by Joss Whedon. And it makes sense if she's gonna be in Wanda's reality alongside Monica. Monica and Jimmy Woo, I think, are S.W.O.R.D. agents who believe Wanda should not be imprisoned and needs to be free at her will. But on the other side of the coin, we have S.W.O.R.D. members and leaders who think that she needs to be locked up. That's why we hear Randall Park's voice from the radio trying to help Wanda, and Monica's character trying to be nice to Wanda, unlike others who don't like her or are a potential threat while she's in her fake sitcom world. 
Now, we still haven't heard of Darcy Lewis, maybe she will come in handy? Also a case very similar to those two is the character Beverly. She could be related to S.W.O.R.D. in some way, uh, she's listed to show up in 5 episodes, so I don't know. Uh, she might also be revealed to be a huge comic character. Okay, so some final facts before we go into the easter eggs. The commercials we got were pretty cool and I think they have an underlying meaning and they're connected to people who had a hand in creating who Wanda is today. The ad in the first episode is a toaster made by Stark Industries which reminds us of Vision because uh, he's been called a toaster before in the comics. Now you might be reminded of Howard because he was alive in 50s and 60s and had a working company but no. This is clearly a reference to Tony, who in a way killed Wanda and Pietro's parents with rockets and gave birth to Scarlet Witch, and which she is right now. The second ad contains a wristwatch called Strucker with the logo of Hydra on it, which is a reference to Baron Von Strucker, or Baron Wolfgang Strucker, who gave Wanda the powers she has today with the help of Loki's scepter and mind gem attached to it. And I think you got my point about the ads being related to the people responsible for the creation of Scarlet Witch. Now let's talk about Westview's people a little bit. The townspeople, they say for the children a couple of times, like a slogan. It kind of reminds me of Nazis saying Hail Hydra in the MCU. Now, at the end of the second one, we see that Wanda is suddenly pregnant. Is them saying for the children of any importance or not? I don't know, but that was weird. Hot pie is ready! Now the hot pie is ready. An awesome detail I figured out is that Agnes, Ag, Arthur, Hark, Ness, you get my point, is really pushing Wanda to make babies with vision so that she or Mephisto can possibly take advantage of those babies. If this is true, she can be just a goon working for Mephisto. We mentioned him in our previous video, he's the devil in Marvel comics. Other thing that Agnes mentions is her husband and she talks behind his back so much. But he suspiciously doesn't appear in the show, so he might be Mephisto? In the scene where a couple of women are sitting together, Dottie talks about the devil and says that devil's in the details. And after that, Agnes says that's not the only place devil is. Maybe implying that she is in fact working for Mephisto? Or she's simply just referring to Dottie because she is so bossy. And Agnes is the helpful character from the comics after all. Agatha in the comics is a powerful wish that helps Wanda to control her powers, and isn't that evil. But then again, she may be under the influence of Mephisto. Another thing that backs this up is that Paul Bettany in a recent interview said that one of the biggest things for him while working on the show was working with a surprise actor, which he always dreamed of working with? Maybe this unknown actor is playing Mephisto. Now let's get some easter eggs that are hidden in WandaVision. The biggest ones are The Dick Van Dyke Show and Bewitched. The intro of the first episode is similar to that of The Dick Van Dyke Show. Vision coming home and seeing his boss and wife in the house is like the intro too. The decoration of the house and the kitchen setting also have similarities with the show from the 60s. Also, the separate bits from the second episode is from Dick Van Dyke. The animated intro of the second episode is just like the intro from Bewitched. Another element that was borrowed from Bewitched is... Agnes, or Agatha, is literally based on the nosy neighbor from the show's Mrs. Kravitz, which was trying so hard to find out if the main character is a witch or not. Speaking of that, the show Bewitched is about a witch married to a normal man and trying to hide the fact that she has powers. It sounds kind of familiar? Yeah. And above all that, there's a theory that says Wanda has made this reality like American sitcoms because that's what she saw as a kid on TV back in Sokovia. And this reality that she's made is inspired by the image she has from America or Western civilization. And probably that's why the town is called Westview. Now let's talk about some other characters that might be important. Vision's boss and his wife. Now, Deborah Jo Robb has been in some sitcoms, like that 70s show, and she's a famous actress, sort of. But Fred Melamed, Mr. Hart, isn't a famous sitcom actor, or a comic character. But he's worked with Woody Allen in some of his movies, and has guest starred in many sitcoms like Brooklyn Nine-Nine, 30 Rock, and New Girl. The strange but lovely couple are just Mr. and Mrs. Hart for now. But maybe, just maybe, they can become more than that. Now these two other easter eggs are laid in the intro for the sitcom show from the second episode. The first thing that is really hard to see is the helmet of Grim Reaper, a villain appearing in Tom King's The Vision. We also talked about him in our previous video, link in the description below, 
and we thought that he probably won't show up, but now it seems like we must consider it. However, it can just be a reference to Virginia, Wanda's synthesized droid, made by Vision in that comic, who kills Grim Reaper and buries him. The other easter egg needs a little more explanation. After the helmet scene, we see Wanda going to buy groceries, and on the wall we see a poster of a milk brand, and under it the name Bova. Now Bova Ayrshire? In the comics is a cow that talks and is like humans, and is created by High Evolutionary, a scientist that made a group called Newman, a group of evolved animals. Bova helped Magda Lehenshire deliver her babies. Wanda and Pietro. She was later used by High Evolutionary to raise Newman, and ultimately all got killed by High Evolutionary because he thought that they were never meant to be. Now High Evolutionary's name is Herbert Windham. Vision's co-worker was named Herbert, or Herb. He might be a reference to Windham, but again, he might just own a farm and then have a cow called Bova just for fun. Last but not least, the beekeeper. He is said by some people to be the character Swarm from the comics. Uh, this character can change his shape and even fly because his body is actually millions of tiny bees. But considering the fact that he came out of the sewer, he might not have his flying ability now. Or maybe they just don't show that to us. Swarm has been a member of Sinister Six and resembles what we've seen from the episode. But the thing is, he has a sword logo on the back of his outfit. He too might be imprisoned by sword and shows up in this reality for some reason, or he might be a totally random sword agent. But based on his evil character, I don't think he's up to any good. Let's talk about his backstory in Earth 616. His name was Fritz von Meyer before his mutation. He was a Nazi scientist and then became this villain that we know of. His mutation occurred while he was experimenting on bees exposed to radiation because he wanted to make them obey him so that he could use their killer instincts and intelligence, like Hank Pym using ants, but they turned against him and killed him, and he came back to life as Swarm. Fun thing is that this beekeeper's actor is a stun guy, which has done some stunts in different Marvel movies, and has showed up in an episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as a background character, so make of that what you will. Considering Wanda's pregnancy, Mephisto, Agatha Harkness, Bova, Sword, and Swarm, and other characters that might show up, I think we're in for a thrilling ride. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a like. And till the next video, take care.